put this put this up here. Okay, everyone. So publishing uh, two videos today. This is the second one talking about Nike. Um, so this is not a vlog. This is me talking and sharing my thoughts on what has happened and transpired over the past. I guess it's been probably about three or four weeks now. And for those that don't know, a New York Times article was released. I'm going to say early November. Sorry, I don't know the exact date, but early November. Um, and it was an interview with a, uh, a great runner, Mary Kane. And Mary uh, used to run under a coach, uh, Alberto Salazar, who was a coach for the Nike Oregon Project uh, up in Oregon. In, um, I guess it'd be in the Portland area. And the article outlined um, basically some very serious allegations about Alberto Salazar and the culture of the Nike Oregon project, basically uh, shaming ladies and Mary about their weight and about how they need to lose weight in order to compete um, better in running. And I'm summarizing very, very simply. but. Um, so this article was posted, it's the New York Times, so it's a really big deal, and it really caught hold, I would say, outside of the running world as well. Like people who have nothing to do with running and don't really, you know, care about the sport of running were talking about this article. Um, so the reason it's taken me now, it's what, late, well, heading toward late November, it's taken me a while to bring up the topic, first of all. Um, I was in Argentina representing the United States at the World Mountain Running Championships. And yes, uh, the USA, USA Track and Field is their, I guess, main sponsor is Nike. So there's the Nike swoosh. Um, so I was busy. And then also um, I was finishing a book um, called Shoe Dog. Probably some of you have read it. It's about the founding story and yeah, the founding story of Nike. Uh, it's the memoir of Phil Knight, who is the, yeah, he was the founder of Nike, um, along with eventually Bill Bowerman, a former coach at the University of Oregon. Um, so I was finishing that book and I wanted to finish the book so I could really fully grasp the story of Nike. So the timing was really interesting, the dropping of the New York Times article. And literally, I think two days later, I finished uh, Shoe Dog, the book. Um, and then lastly, I've learned over time not to put my thoughts out on the internet like immediately, like oh, people like social media is just so aggressive. And I like to let a story kind of play out a little bit. And sure enough, as I was kind of researching everything on the flight to Argentina, another article dropped by the Oregonian, a paper in Oregon. I think it was, you know, kind of giving Alberto's side of the story, Alberto Salazar's side of the story. And for those that don't know, Alberto Salazar, um, very successful marathon runner back in the 70s, uh, won the New York City Marathon three times in a row, and really, yeah, so he's a very accomplished runner back in the day. Um, okay, so I must say the book Shoe Dog did um, open up a lot of layers behind Nike and behind the founding of Nike, behind Phil Knight. It appeared to me to be a pretty fair assessment of the struggles that Phil Knight went through and also kind of the aggressive na nature of Nike as they grew and grew and grew in the, really in the, well, yeah, really in the 70s and 80s, especially, um, late 70s and 80s. And, you know, Nike's come, out, uh, come under a lot of fire in the past, you know, even in this book, uh, Phil Knight's memoir, he brings up, uh, I don't know if you remember, like the sweatshops, um, I guess, in China, um, that were just really bad working conditions that Nike was making their shoes in. Uh, this was... Don't quote me, but I think this was like early 2000s. It kind of came to the light. And um, overall, I think the book was pretty fair. It was just pretty fair. Um, and, you know, I'm, a, I'm an outsider looking in, but it gave me a decent respect. I'll just put it that way for Nike. Um, you know, no one's perfect. No, no, uh, no company is perfect. Of course, you know, usually if you're at the top of the mountain, everyone's gunning for you. So Nike's at the top as far as revenue. I think Adidas is second. Um, like, you know, just in terms of dollars and cents, like they're the biggest shoe company in the world. I still think uh, Michael Jordan's influence on the company will forever cement Nike at the top for a long, long time. Um, so then all this news begins to break about Mary Kane 
and the Nike Oregon Project, which is a training group up in Oregon um, for elite runners who are trying to make their career um, as professional runners, whether it's on the track, whether it's on the roads. Um, Galen Rupp is a name, of course, that everyone knows. Kara Goucher um, used to run up there. Um, a lot of great runners have gone through the Nike Oregon Project. Um, Amy Yoder Bagley is another name that's come up in this whole situation. And um, so, from what I, and I guess also, yeah, so I have a couple names written down here. I've got Mary Kane, Kara Goucher, and then kind of a third one that would not, and I don't know this story as well, but that would have not have been, um, would not have been connected to, um, oh, I'm sorry, to Alberto because she's a sprinter, but Allison Felix. So Allison is, I, I, what, I mean, she's got to be, right, the best, I would say the best U.S. sprinter of all time, you know? I don't know how you could argue against that. Um, she's just, she's been crushing it for a decade plus. Um, she's just been amazing. So then um, she becomes pregnant and, you know, she's going to have a child. And from what I've read, she, her contract was um, basically put on hold. And like she, because she was gonna have a kid, Nike pulled her contract. And again, I don't know all the details. I've read as much as I could, but that is just a bunch of, you know what, uh, that gets me real fired up. And so Allison Felix left Nike and now she runs for Athleta and any, I don't know, no, something, I'll put it on the screen right now. I, anyway, and um, she's trying to qualify for the Tokyo Olympics 2020. I hope she gets it so, so bad. I hope she gets, I'm rooting for Allison Felix. Um, she's 33, so she's a year younger. Or she, I think she's 33. Bottom line is um, what happened under Alberto Salazar is also a bunch of you know what, and makes me very upset. And the fact that Kara Goucher, a former Buffalo, and I'm looking at my screen here because I'm looking at my notes. Um, she's, she's come out very vocally in, and listen, Kara and Alberto were like this. So Kara's father was killed by a drunk driver when she was a kid. And from what I could tell, again, outsider looking in, Alberto was a little bit of a father figure to Kara. And um, so I think this has been really, really hard for Kara, who was also, um, her weight became an issue for the Nike Oregon Project and Alberto. And so the, it's just ridiculous. And here's where I'm struggling is this systemic within Nike, all right? Meaning, is this go beyond Alberto? Now, now, kind of, I guess, a bright light is Shalane Flanagan, who just ended her elite marathon running career. She won New York City last year, and now she is a coach at the Bowerman Track Club, which is also a Nike affiliated training group up in the Portland area. So she, I think she's come out and I've, I've read some of her stuff, like she's like trying to change the culture of what's happening up there in Portland with these runners, these elite runners who are chasing down dreams. And um, so I hope a tide is turning through Shalane and the Bowerman Track Club. And would also really tease me off. Mm. You go to the NikeOregonProject.com website, it doesn't even exist. Like, so I'm just one, like it's, it's literally not there. And so, at least on my computer. And so Mark Parker, the CEO of Nike, I haven't seen any major, now let me know down in the comments if I'm wrong, I haven't seen any major vocal stance about this situation. Um, with Alberto, who is now also on leave uh, for four years from coaching because of uh, other issues. I'm not even going to get into it. And um, so bottom line, I am now, the question becomes, um, and I'm not afraid to go here, does this mean I won't wear Nike? Um, I will say this much. So I'm obviously wearing something Nike right now. I've got Nike shoes right here. I'll say this much. If I don't hear some more vocal stance against what's happening, like, okay, the U.S. Olympic trials, 2020, June, see you in Eugene, okay, I'm coming. I, um, 
it's like it's the it's at the it's at the University of Oregon, which is a Nike like everything at the University of Oregon is run by Nike. Um, as far as buildings and new stadiums and everything, there's going to be protests if there's not a more vocal stance against whatever's happening up there. Now, maybe Shalane Flanagan can be a voice in a light in the darkness. But um, if Mark Parker, and again, please help down in the comments, is he making a stance? So I am, um, now I will also just say one thing. The dignity of the human person, I truly believe in it. Even, yes, I'll even say it, Alberto Salazar. Um, we need to, <laughs> we need, I believe every human being has dignity. And I don't want to trash Alberto down in the comments. I don't want to trash anybody. I just want to make sure that there are healthy um, relationships and healthy uh, training and healthy everything going on up there in Portland. And so um, I, I just want to make that point. Like, I still believe in the dignity of the human person. And it, it appears, Nike, that you've placed winning and money and sponsorships may be above the dignity of the human person in the past. I don't know if it's going to happen continuing moving forward, but please, Mark Parker, if you're out there, just let us know. Like, Because at the end of the day, right, everybody, it stops with the CEO. The buck starts, the, yeah, how's that saying go? The buck stops with him. Um, is that how you say it? It stops with the CEO. So if somebody's got to speak up, and I just haven't heard it yet. Again, I've been traveling, and I haven't really had a chance to read all the articles. But um, that is my position. That is my stance on the Nike situation and unfortunate situation. Um, I hope that uh, wounds can be healed. I hope all three of those women... Kara, Allison, Mary, and all the other women that were impacted by this Nike Oregon Project uh, debacle uh, can heal from it because I know it can be painful uh, to talk about weight and to struggle with that and eating and oh my gosh, it gets really serious really quickly. And now Kara Goucher, she just ran the North Face 50 mile, uh, yeah, out in San Francisco. She, she's becoming an ultra runner. It's amazing. Anyway, I'm very disappointed. I'm still going to wear Nike. I'll just, I'm not afraid to say it, but I'll say this much. They're on watch with me. Um, they need to be a little more, something needs to change. And obviously getting rid of the Nike Oregon project is a start. If it's gone for good, I don't know. And again, hopefully Shalane and the Bowerman Track Club can turn things around. Love you guys. Thank you for listening. I know that was a little different, a little bit of a rant. And um, that is that. So I th I'm sure I'm missing something. I look forward to your thoughts down below. And yes, question of the day for this video is share your opinion. Where do you stand? Where do you fall? Am I missing some information? I probably am. I tried to do as much research as possible. There's a lot of information out there. Um, that's that.